Good morning, good morning, good morning. It is Saturday school. Uh, I'm Claire Perry Louise. Nice to see you jumping on this morning. Um, I am a coach from the Internet Business School and I have been for a long time, maybe since 2014. Hi, Andrew. Nice to see you. Um, but I also build communities um, and that is my specialism. So I just help Simon out sometimes and come along to these sessions and share some stuff with you. Um, so when you uh, are jumping on, say hello to me, tell me where you are. It's nice to see Andrew um, jumping on this morning. So this morning, I'm going to share some internet marketing tools with you, which are free internet marketing tools, which is always a bonus. Uh, hi, Peter, nice to see you. It's like having my friends. It's like having my friends back in the house. Hi, Hazel. Maybe one day we'll just actually meet. So. Uh, um, so yeah, so I'm going to share some of the internet marketing tools, the free ones, and quite often you can get, um, I remember when I started, so I did Simon's course in 2013, and uh, I remember that kind of thing of like, look at these tools, you can use this tool and that tool, and I spent loads of money on different software tools, um, so I have experienced quite a few of them, and quite a few you can get for free, so I'm going to talk about those this morning. Uh, morning, Dave. Nice to see you. Hi, Gerard. Nice to see you as well. Isle of Wight. Good morning, Rob. I haven't been to the Isle of Wight since I was a child, and I think you can do those things where you put stuff sand into um, bottles, can't you? Different coloured sands. Can you still do that in the Isle of Wight? That's when I last went. Um, so, Tim, hello. Did I get a message from you on the 7th of July? I don't recall, Tim, to be honest. I can, I will have a look. I don't remember any messages from you. Um, I'm sorry if I didn't reply to a message. I'm not great with messages and I also get a lot of messages. So um, two of those things, I don't recall yours, but I'll have a look, Tim, afterwards. Um, yes, you can, excellent. See, that's what the Isle of Wight's for, putting sand into little test tubes. Um, it's been a while, Abigail. Hello, nice to see you. So, um, say hello if you're jumping on. After me, we have a special guest, as ever, and um, his name's Chris, Chris Payne, and he is going to be talking to us about creating Amazon books and creating a free list using Amazon. So, that's coming up. So, that's after me. Um, and, yeah, so what's, let me tell you a bit more about Chris. So Chris, Simon's known Chris for 11 years. So he, I think he's probably known him a little bit longer than he's known me. So I think he's known me for 10. Um, and he used to run a UK business called Life Tools. Um, and now he spends his time helping people grow substantial email lists for free on the back of Amazon by creating super thin eBooks and paperbacks and publishing them on Amazon. So that's coming up afterwards. This is, this is I have a book on Amazon. This is not, it's not very thin on a Friday. This is my community book. So books are good. I've got two books actually. I've got another book, but that's out of date now. But anyway, so good morning, Chris. Chris is here already. So we're looking forward to speaking to Chris later. So um, let's see what we're going to talk about. So we're going to talk about some of the best free marketing tools for entrepreneurs. Um, and mainly, well, quite a lot of these are the ones that I've used. So we're going to go through my section and then we're going to get on to Chris. So let's have a look. So I went to an event this week um, and it was a networking event put on by NatWest, which was is a really, really good one. And um, I got to speak to the president of the Exeter University Entrepreneurs Society. And he said to me, he was telling me about the bias in universities for people to go off into corporate land and he wanted to really encourage people to be more entrepreneur, entrepreneur led and um, make a difference in the world and all of those things. And he said to me, what would your advice be? And if you know my story, you'll know that I used to be a solicitor and then I did Simon's course and then I became a entrepreneur of sorts, doing all kinds of things, mainly centering on relationship building, membership sites, community building. That's really where my heart is. And I thought about the advice and I'd say the most important thing you can do, whatever it is you want to do, is just take some steps towards what you want. Because if you don't take those steps, you are not going to get anywhere. And a few years ago, I um, started up a community. And the only reason I started it was because I had this idea about bringing people together 
and I set up a Zoom meeting. So it was like one tiny, tiny step, step and I set up a Zoom meeting. And that led into this community being created and led into this book. And you that would never have happened if I hadn't taken that first tiny step. So the most effective thing, whatever you're doing, is to do it. So if you sit on this webinar this morning and you learn things, and you learn things from Chris, it's really important that you take the action on it, even if it feels like something really small. And I know from someone who has definitely procrastinated and definitely thought, well, I don't have all the tools I need. And hence, some of this talk today about what kind of marketing things you need um, and tools you can use in marketing. Um, because sometimes we just hold ourselves back because we think we haven't got the right tools when we actually have. So that is my kind of probably the best slide of the whole lot, to be honest, in terms of the thing that's going to make the most change in your life, that slide. So don't forget that one. OK, so we're going to have a look at some ways to generate ideas, especially if you're starting off now um, or even if you are thinking about different things and you already are a business owner. So somebody in my community, Paul, he was talking to me about this idea that he has that he's sharing. He's thinking of different ideas. And he's sharing them every day on LinkedIn. So different business ideas. And he's grouping them into categories. And they might be like the most craziest ideas. So he talked about having an idea around not losing the lid on Tupperware boxes. And if you know you've got plastic, plastic boxes at home, especially if you've got children and they have them in the pack lunch, you can never find the lid, can you? It's a bit like you can never find the other sock. Who can't find other socks? It's like socks, again, to the washing machine. The washing machine takes one of the socks and then hides it somewhere and you never find it again. It's like one of those conundrums. In fact, that is a business idea. <laughs> so it's just like, he's writing these different ideas every day. So one's about how to not lose the lid on plastic boxes. And you think, well, that's not a business idea, but it just generates that creative being around thinking about different ways to um, approach life or things that are missing and it kind of gets your creative mind into that kind of mindset so that's something that he's doing so never discount idea generation but make sure that if you do have something that feels inspiring to you or you think okay what's the next step like I said to you about that zoom meeting so I'm going to talk about um, some of the easy ways you can build a website um, looking at content creation and design marketing and productivity so idea generation. So if you are thinking of um, trying to look at different ideas, you can use Portent. Now, if you are wondering about the website links and you're thinking, can we get the uh, slides? Yes, you can. However, entrepreneurs, business owners, all of you on this webinar, just use Google. So just put Portent into Google. And if it inspires you to look at it, just find it that way. So don't worry about the links too much. Um, so sock clips. There you go, Hugh. Brilliant idea. Socks. Sock clips. Should I to actually, should we go back to socks? I'm going to tell you something else about socks. So my friend um, has this problem, can never find his socks. So what he did was he got rid of the entire sock collection, his entire sock collection, and he replaced it with orange socks. So all the same orange socks. And so now in his family washing, his socks show up because they're orange. He doesn't have to match them and he's never got a problem. So he always wears orange socks. So there's my sock, uh, sock share for today. So there you go, Hugh, sock clips, but never mind that orange socks, or yellow socks, something that stands out. Anyway, so important. Um, lets you catch, create catchy titles for your next blog post, podcast, or video. So you can type the subject in and it will spin up creative title and advice to take it to the next level. So I could probably try and show you this. Whoops, no, I can't, I've gone back. Let's have a look. Uh, let's see, oh, there's Google Alerts, we've gone ahead. Can you see that screen that I'm sharing now? Hopefully you can. Let's see if it comes up this way. Oh, look, this is where I said Google it and then you weren't meant to do it. And then it's all going to go wrong. <laughs> um, so we'll try and find it this way. Hopefully idea generator. There you go. If you can see this, I, haven't, I can't even see the chat anymore. Here you go. See, see what I was saying? Where's my chat box gone? 
so professional this is the way you've gone i can't say i'm just going to carry on as if as if it's all fine right uh there you go important idea generator where are you let's have a look where are you chat i've lost you here we go well no one says anything can you can you still see my can you see think of a subject you can see my screen think of a subject that we can put in yes you can see it. excellent right what is your subject tell me a subject you'd like me to put into this idea generator yay thank you hazel right so brexit okay let's go for brexit okay generate idea let's see how brexit can make you sick <laughs> see this is what happens if you put it see another title Shocking ways Brexit will make you a better dancer. It doesn't get Brexit. I can see. I can see this. Let's try a new idea. Let's see what we've got else now. You need to generate that idea. Yeah, language lessons. Let's try Brexit. Do you need to, what were you saying, Tim? What idea do you need to generate? Language lessons. Let's see. Some of these things you need to play with. Insert celebrity names, guide to language lessons. So Beyonce's guide to language lessons. Someone would click on that, wouldn't they? They'd want to know what Beyonce had to say. So 13 least favourite language lessons. Oh, you need, you need a generator to think of an idea to search for. Okay. Why language lessons are the secret ingredient. 19 facts about language lessons that will impress your friends. So you can keep going. And 14 unexpected ways language lessons can give you better hair. Well, well, that would be an interesting post. See, you lot have not got lies if you have time to stay on this forever, but you know, let's go with it. Wow, I know, wow, amazing. So there we go. Right, let's get back to it. So where's the other thing? Right, let's get back to Canva. Okay, we're back to Canva now, hopefully. We're back on here. Okay, so shall I tell you something? When you're running a webinar, there's so many screens to look at. And doing this, swapping between screens, recipe for disaster. That's my top tip for today. Okay, so let's have a look on the next slide. Google Trends. Okay, so Google Trends is a really great way to see what is trending, obviously, because it's a Google Trend thing. So, for example, if you put in there uh, cider press making, you would see a graph over time where making cider peaks at the time that the apples are ready and come off and then blah 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 and then other times it doesn't so i if you've ever been on one of my my um webinars before you will have heard my story probably about my amazing idea that i had shortly after attending simon's course um to create a website about halloween and it was called the spirits of Har halloween which was my my really really good title and so I spent a long time on WordPress creating a website and affiliate links to Amazon, in fact, which you'll probably learn about with Chris. And um, so the idea was, and to eBay, I think, as well. So the idea was that people would buy, they'd go to my website, Spirits of Halloween, they'd buy the products and um, all those kind of things, and they'd get the affiliate commissions. However, what's the one thing about Halloween? A bit like Christmas an Easter and a birthday it happens once a year, okay? So on the 1st of November, no one's so bothered about your website and people aren't really bothered and to worry about the 14th of October for about two weeks. It's not a great business plan, okay? So think about what you're gonna do and think about the longevity and whether there's enough scope in it to make loads of money. There was, where I live, there used to be a shop called the Christmas shop. I never got it. I was like, well, you can't, I mean, who wants to think about Christmas in the summer? Nobody. What happened? It goes down. So there you go. Google alerts, put that in, have a look. Yeah, people do sell things on Halloween. I know it's kind of a thing. I know, Andrew. People do sell Halloween, but it wasn't worth the effort I put into that website. I tell you now. And it wasn't my thing, but hey, it gave me the experience and it gave me a story to tell you all. So here's the next one. This is the Small Business Trends title generator. So this is a good way, a bit like Portent to, um, or the one we just did, it was Portent, was to generate um, great titles for articles and blog posts. 
So you can go into here and generate headlines. Now, if you are writing content, um, then the headline is quite often the last thing you think about probably. And a lot, often people will just put it in quickly at the end, but actually you need to put a lot of attention into the um, headline because that is the thing that grasps people's first attention and what is the point of whether they read your story or whether they don't read your story um, or piece of content. So you really need to spend a lot more time generating headlines. And a good thing you can do with headline generating is maybe write down 30 different headlines. Or if you think of a headline, write it down and then just have a list of all the headlines. So, um, so this is a good thing to do. Um, let's see if we can, if I can click on this. Ah, oh dear. Important was just the generating thing that I spoke about a second ago. Um, we just talked about that one. Let's have a look. I'm sure I should be able to just click through to this. It just doesn't seem to be wanting to click. So I can give you an example of this, small business trends. Do, do, do. Okay, so many things. So while we look for it, this is portent that we were just talking about. Um, and then this is Google Alerts, actually, we've got this here. So if you create, Google Alert actually is different. I was talking about Google Trends, but this is Google Alerts. So for example, if your topic is Brexit, you can put in Brexit in here and it will, you can put in your email address here and you can create an alert. So every time that Brexit is mentioned, you will be given an email alert. Now that might drive you nuts because Brexit might be mentioned quite a lot. Like if you put COVID in, it would have been mentioned quite a lot. But this is really good if, for example, your name is anything, but we'll use Simon as an example. Every time something that comes up with Simon Coulson, he could get an alert to say that he's been mentioned. So you can keep on top of what is being said about you. So Google Alerts is a very good tool to keep on top of what's going on around you. So that is Google Alerts. Um, so, yep. Okay. So I was going to try and find that other thing for you this night. Uh, do -do -do. Google Alerts. Okay. Right. Let me just go back to here. Okay. So look for that one. That's light portent. Not, okay. Not going to bother with it now. So this tool um, you can find at coschedule.com headline analyzer is a way to analyze those headlines. So if you're creating a lot of headlines and you want to know whether or not people are likely to read them, you can use this headline analyzer. So um, these are the kinds of things that we'll look at, like how many characters you use, um, how clear it is, the sentiment, headline type, word, you know, all these kind of things that analyze them have a very clever way of doing that. So here, for example, the other day, um, oh, that's good, Tim. Now, Tim says that's what he needs. You're going to get a separate Gmail account for the replies. Yeah, exactly. It's a good idea if you don't have too many replies, or you could get them sent into a folder directly going into a folder on your gmail account i think you can set up folders so and then rules so if this has this in it if it's from google alerts it goes into a certain folder so that would be yeah and these are all free yeah these are all free um sandra so this is the headline analyzer so the other day yesterday i wrote a linkedin article and i called it the day i met the president um and the reason i called it that was because i met the president of the xt university um, Entrepreneur Society, like I said, but I didn't say that, did I? I said the day I met the president, and I just thought, well, we'll just go with the day I met the president because it sounds more interesting. And it was the president, but it wasn't Barack or anybody else. So um, you know, there's a little bit of an intrigue. So these were the suggestions for my headline. You read that? Oh, thanks, Tim. Um, so these were the suggestions for my headline. So um, it says I should have increased my emotional words. So maybe I could have put the day the president made me cry or something like that, which he didn't. <laughs> so I can put that, but you know, that's the thing, you know, like um, the heart, you know, like so, so, something more emotional anyway, which I didn't. But there you go. Decrease your common words. I don't know which ones are common. Probably I and the. Yeah, there's two there's in there, so that's probably not so good. 
should have put three more words. So maybe I should have put something like that. Um, important lessons from the president maybe would have been better. And um, add more emotionally positive or negative words. Yeah. So it is, you know, there's not like that. It's not, it's not clicking in maybe enough into people's um, emotions. So, but if you are really into this and you really want to, like I write my things on LinkedIn because I just like to make sure I've got a consistent habit. And if people read them, that's great. And if they don't, it doesn't matter. But like I said last month, I think I went to um, a networking event and someone knew me because they, they knew all about me because they've been reading my LinkedIn posts. So um, yeah, use that for analyzing your headlines. Okay, so um, coggle it is a useful way to um, create spider diagrams. And quite often, some people like to do this, some people like to see it visually, and that's just quite a nice way to visually think about your ideas and get some kind of um, framework. If you are doing online courses, something like that could be really good. And I've done that in the past where I've had like the, the centre topic and then I've created an online course and then thought, okay, which module is going to come off there and you can move it around. So Coglet is a nice idea for that. Okay, so um, researching your audience. Always a good idea to find out what your audience um, is interested in or the questions they're asking. So there's two ways you can do these this for free. There is Answer the Public and there's Quora. So I'll show you an example of this. So, um, so here you go. So we'll put in here, Answer the Public. So on Answer the Public, you can have three free um, searches a day. It used to be more, but it's three now. So we go into here. Okay, so discover what people are asking about. So do we have any more topics? Would you like to suggest a topic? And we'll put it into here. So any topic you like, and we'll pop it in here. Enter a topic, brand or product. It's everything you're talking about. Spirituality, the Bake Off. Okay, addiction. Okay, so let's keep it. Let's start with it. Thank you, um, Frederick and Sandra and Aniku uh, and Curry. Is that right? Uh, media products. Let's keep it. Let's try eviction because it's very specific. Okay, let's look at that search eviction. So these are all the questions that people are asking on the internet about eviction. They are gathering. There we go. Look. So this is really cool because this is the different thing. So where? So where is? Um, eviction on a credit report so people are asking about that where is it where's the eviction court um some of them obviously aren't relevant uh let's have a look we'll see here so will eviction show on a credit report now if you are in working in eviction or you have a product that supports people being evicted or you want to help people not be evicted or whatever it is about eviction you can see what questions people are asking about your topic area so if you were going to write a blog post, you could you could write a blog post and people are asking, will eviction show on my credit report? So you can entitle your blog post, will eviction show on my credit report? And then people will be searching in your topic area and then they will come up and come to your blog and then maybe go to your services. So you can see all the different things here that are coming up. Um, like here, someone's, are eviction notices sent by certified mail? So again, people are searching for this. So there's lots and lots of things you can use it for. So, um, and then it goes into different things as well, like with can, can eviction be expunged? Can eviction be reversed? Can eviction be stopped? There's loads and loads of different ones. And then comparisons. Um, is eviction like foreclosure? Blah, blah, blah. Games like eviction notice on Roblox. Roblox, that's a children's game. I know all about that, right. And then it goes down and does it like this. So you can look at all the different things in this alphabetically. And then at the bottom, and you can save these results as well. So there you go. So there's an example of eviction. Um, and does it, does it show the volume of searches? Uh, I don't know if it does on here, but it will do if, let's have a look at the data. I don't know if it does on there. No, it doesn't on here, but I guess you can see, you might do if you get the paid version possibly. 
Um, but you could also use Google to find out um, how much people are searching for things. So you could use, um, uh, yeah, if you sign into Google AdWords, then you can use the keyword research tool, or you can use other keyword researchers, which will tell you how many searches people are getting for different topics. So um, that is answer the public. The second thing you can do is you can use, has anyone ever used Quora? So you, there you go, you don't need the website, you just put it in the box. There you go, Quora, yes. So, oh, I hope it's not gonna make me log in. Are you gonna make me log in? I don't want to log in, I don't know how to log in because, oh, goodness me. I don't want to come on the thingy. Let's see if I can get it from somewhere else. Hold on, I don't really want to log in and create a whole account just for that. Let's see if this works. Copy, let's see. I don't want to sign up Quora. I'm already signed up somehow. Let's see if that works. There we go, right. Okay, so um, how can I find an internet marketing mentor? So these are some of the questions that people are asking. I was looking at this the other day when I was doing this researching for today. And there's some crazy, 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 crazy questions on here. Like, really crazy. Let's have a look. So let's see what other questions we had. Uh, Bake Off. What's the question about the Bake Off? We'll just put the Bake Off in here. See if people are talking about the Bake Off. What makes the Great British Bake Off so appealing? Why is the Great British Bake Off filmed in a tent? Interesting question. Um, why can I watch the first three lessons and then people answer them? So there you go. So you can find out what is trending, what people are asking in all kinds of things. So let's do spirituality. Spirituality is quite a broad topic. So look, you can see all sorts on here, spirituality. Here you go, how can, how can I become more spiritual? Let's have a look. Um, how can you become more spiritual? Quit all bad habits and addictions, even coffee and cigarettes. I don't really agree with that. <laughs> Anyhow, before we get into something too deep, use Quora to answer your business questions, see what people are asking, okay? Maybe don't ask them how to become more spiritual. Give everything up and just be like that all the time. Maybe that's the answer. Right, okay, so that, everybody, is Quora. Use that, get research done, there we go, right. Okay, um, so here's some platforms that you can use to build websites. So um, let's have a look. Uh, Tim says, a friend used um, Quora to generate posts by commenting on some of the more stupid questions that are asked. The posts, yeah. Yeah, comment on the more stupid questions. Uh, hours of fun on Quora, there you go. Hours of fun, see? I can just make you waste more of your time, can't I? So here are some of the ways to build a website. So wordpress.org is hosted by WordPress. Um, you don't need to have your own hosting, which is kind of the way that you get something onto the internet. Um, yeah, wordpress.com is that one. And then wordpress.org is if you want to build your own website um, for free, you can do that. So there's lots of courses about that. Um, there's lots of courses by the Internet Business School about WordPress. If you want to build a website using WordPress, WordPress is really good because it has really good um, SEO, search engine optimization, which means that you can get found more easily on the internet and on Google. Um, but yeah, so WordPress, however, morning, Billy. Um, um, and Wix.com is a way to do that in a more simple way because it is very customizable and it's cloud-based. So you don't need to set up all the um, background hosting and paper hosting, all of those kind of things. That's another way to build a website. So um, WordPress.com is free. Um, there are WordPress.org, there are free ways to do most of it. Some of it you're gonna have to pay for like the hosting. So in terms of free internet tools, WordPress.com is your thing. And then Kajabi.com is not free, um, but also has all of the capability for running an internet marketing business and a podcast. Um, 
Yes, thank you, John. Yeah. Um, he says that Wix is good as well and search engine optimization friendly. My sister has a website using Wix, which has always served her very well and had millions of hits. So it's definitely found. So, um, so um, I think I think the back office changed all the settings, Tim. So that is why it's like it is. Apparently, I'm. I just turn up and do the webinar. Sorry. So um, let's see. Um, so if you go onto a website and you think, ah, oh, I really, really like that website and it's done on WordPress, you can look at, the, um, you can use what WP theme is this. If you type that into Google and it will show you the exact theme and the plugins that are being used um, on that website. So if you wanted to recreate your own, then that's the way to do it. There's also um, a website called Page Speed Insights. And so you can see how fast your devices are, because if your pages aren't loading really quickly, then it's really, really um, like people just lose interest. Like people have got like five seconds. It's something really, really short. If it's not loaded within a few seconds, then people are on to the next thing. You can use typeform.com to build really nice online surveys um, and landing pages, but you can also um, do a Google um, form um, if you want to ask a question or do a questionnaire to your audience or something like that. So you don't have to pay for that either. So you can use Google as well, Google Forms. So that's a cheap way to do it. Um, so, um, okay. Here's a few more tools that you can use that we've um, looked at before. Um, so a slogan name generator. So slogans for your business as well. So if you want a, a catchy slogan, you can go and use the slogan name generator because that is what it's for. And now with AI, there's lots and lots of help you can get. And, they, and, and artificial intelligence has got all these amazing things it can do. You can create art with it. You can do all kinds of things. So that's kind of the next level of how we will be creating content and finding things. So um, name check is, in, is a good website because it allows you to check the availability of names on websites and social media. So if you want to put your name into name check, um, you can find out if your name is um, being used, say like you haven't got your Twitter handle or so you can just check across the board about whether you can get your, your handle. So if you start a new business, you can see if you can get access to it. So, um, And then namelix.com generates short, brandable business names using artificial intelligence. So you can look at namelix.com. I like namelix. Um, let's have a look. So namelix. Namelix. Okay, so keynote keywords so has anybody got something they would like me to pop into this and we can generate a business name have a look hi Kalu that's okay just on time um divorce okay let's have a look divorce generate let's see so then you can ch check how random you want them to be. Random ideas. Let's go for really high random ideas. Okay, next one. Um, so this is like, you can choose. You can have all styles or you can have brandable. Like Google isn't actual word, is it? But it's a brandable name. Um, real words. Let's just go for all styles. Let's see. There we go. Terminator. <laughs> for divorce. <laughs> Ah oh dear, that you love AI. Achiever divorce, unhappy bride. This is great, posh divorce. I am not divorced. I don't know how that is a brand name. Uh, marry me, adulterous, litigate. <laughs> this is fun. There you go. So these are all the ones you can get for divorce. Mona, I rather like that one. Mona, that's quite good. Doziest, you quit. You quit, okay. Hi Alan, nice to see you. Uh, what's this one? I render divorce, sepia, prenup. So there you go. You get all these different names. Like you can go for different things. Eros. There you go. There you go. Relate. That is a name already. So then you can find all these different ideas and give you some ideas for naming your business. Merely divorced. There you go. Good one, John. 
Anybody else want me to try anything in this this one? If I carry on looking, stony divorce. I say but not stony, remedy divorce. Okay, get the idea. It's quite clever, isn't it? You can generate all of these things. Um, if anybody's got any other ideas, we could do another one, but that's name licks for you. Um, yeah, there you go. So you can generate business names using that, which is pretty cool. Uh, what else? And link shortener. So link shortener is instead of having a really long link, link you can change it. It's bitly. It'll be bit.ly and then forward slash and then you can change it so you could make it Claire if Claire was still available. So it'd be bit.ly forward slash Claire, but Claire probably wasn't available. But that's the kind of thing you can do with that. Um, right. OK. So look. Right, lots of you on here this morning. Very good, if you're not on your summer holiday this morning, we, um, we've got a really good section coming up in a moment um, about Amazon and creating little eBooks. So make sure you stick around for that. So we're just gonna talk briefly about content creation and design. So if you're designing content, um, who uses Canva? Canva is something I've used for years and years. It's super easy to use. There's a free version, which is pretty much OK for most things. Um, so Canva is super good. This presentation is made in Canva. For example, you can make brochures. You can make social media posts. They've brought out loads of new features now. You can actually schedule in Canva and post on social media as well. So definitely check out Canva. So it's really, really good. Um, Coolars, I think that's how you pronounce it, is really good to generate um, colour schemes. So if you want to do a new colour scheme, you can use that website and generate different colour schemes and see what they look like. So it's really, really good. So if you want a new branding, you can use that. Let me just see if I can do this. It might make me log in, which I don't really want to. Let's have a look. Oops, I can't even spell it. Coolers. Can I spell it? Here we go. Coolers.co. Um, so, so here you go. So you can do start the generator. Okay, ready to see how fun it is. It is. So let's go. So you can hit the space bar. Here you go. So this could be your new. Um, these are the uh, codes that you need. You can put them into Canva. But say you like that one. You think, well, actually, I really like that, but I'm not so keen on. Um, say I really like this green. So you can press this um, padlock and then you press the space bar again and it will change the colours around it and say, oh, actually, what else? Oh, I really like this, this colour here. So we do that one. We'll just keep, keep those two and then we'll keep pressing the space bar and finding our colour scheme that we really like. So, that, OK, there we go. We're going to go with that one. And then once you've done that, you can um, export it, uh, view it. So there you go. There's our new colour scheme. And um, there are all the codes that you can pop into Canva and you can export that and save it and do all sorts. So if you want to go through, you can look at popular colours, all kinds of things. So that is a really, really good website. So check that out if you are doing, um, if you want some branding done for yourself and you're trying to do it on a budget. Um, let's have a look. Uh, and Pexels. So you can get free um, copy. Don't use images that you have not paid for. Um, well, you don't have to pay for them. They need to be copyright free. So if so, Pexels, for example, for examples, Pexels is free stock photo. So if you use these, then you can you're not going to get someone sending you a notice that you've used their image without permission. So Pexels is a good one. So these are free photos that you can download and use in your social media or use on your other, um, on your website, that kind of thing. Unsplash, again, is another one. Beautiful free images. So there's lots and lots of images. So in, in, in this book that we did in our community, like, let's have a look. like there's loads of images like this one. And these are all off Unsplash. They're all off here. They're all um, generated for free, but we we were able to use them. Here's another one. What's that one about? That's one about heroes. So you can see that you can. There is really good because otherwise, in the old days, you would have to. But these are literally really lovely images just found using these websites and all in Unsplash. So 
definitely think about doing that if you are trying to generate really nice content for your website user user free but just generally what i do is i just search copyright um free images i usually spell it correctly copyright and then these websites um, I don't usually press the ad one because it charges the people, so I, I like to not charge them. So I always go down to the bottom ones. Unsplash, Pixabay, Pexels. So there's a few, there's a few that you can use. So definitely do that if you want to have images and use images. So all for free again. Recording your screen is super good if you want to do a couple of things. If you want to um, create online courses, I create online courses and I recorded them using Loom. So um, it just records your screen and it's really quick. It's also a good way if you're working with people and you want to explain something really e easily, you can create a little Loom video that will um, record what you're doing and you can just show them and you'll see the pointer and then you can send it off to them so um, really easily. So record your screen is Loom is a really good resource to use for that. And it's free up to a certain amount um, um, and then, I think if you want longer videos, you can pay for it. Let me have a look. So Loom, so Loom is a very good, there we go. So you record quick videos on your screen. So you can have your face showing, you can say, look, I'm just talking about X, Y, and Z, and then send it off. So, um, and let's see, pricing. So pricing, it's free, um, up to 50 up to 50 small videos is free 25 videos up to five minutes if you want longer ones and you can edit it as well so it's a really good way to do um, to do quick editing and quick sharing um so yeah use loom for that point of view so some more ideas blog topic generator go to hubspot.com um, and look at blog topic generator and you can get some ideas for blog posts if you want to create blog posts Copyscape is a way to see that the word that you're using, or if you employ someone, if they go onto Fiverr and get them to write something for you, and you want to make sure that it's not plagiarized, you can use copyscape.com to pop it in there and see if it's been used elsewhere on the web. And copy.ai is a really good thing because it's, um, it's now free as well. And if you are wanting to create some, um, if you want to create a blog post and you have a bit of a mind block, you can put in a few topic, you can put in a few starter words and it will generate the top, it will generate most of the wording for you or all of the wording. Uh, it also generates headlines um, and um, all kinds of things. So have a check out copy.ai, which is now free um, and it's a really good way to generate marketing copy amongst other things. So email marketing, um, why stamp? creates really nice signatures at the bottom of each of your emails. So you can have links to your social media using Ystamp um, and um, uh, what else? You can have pictures, you can have quotes, all kinds of things with, with Ystamp. I think I signed up to it, I think it was free, or I used, if you ever put in, have you ever heard of Buzz Sumo? There's often, um, of sumo, but that's sumo. Is it bus sumo or sumo? It's it, they often have good software deals. Let me have a look. I see if I can find that for you. Uh, so look at this. Is it bus sumo? Or is it sumo? Oh, su is it sumo? Is it sumo app? I can't remember. Oh, I don't know that. I think I found a new app sumo. That's, I can't remember. There's a there's a website I think I got it from. I can't remember what it's called, but it's. Can anyone remember me? Where you, where you get you get cheap deals for things through it? I don't know. I'm getting confused. App Sumo is it? App Sumo. So basically, on this website that I now I'm not forgetting that I'm forgetting the name of official site. Yeah, here we go. Thank you, thank you, John and Nadine. Yeah, that's it. Excellent. Thank you. So. AppSumo is, is where I got Y stamp from initially, but this on this website, you can get lifetime deals on things that are coming out. So for example, here, Big View. So Big View is 
a teleprompter. So if you're recording online courses and you want to keep your eye on the screen then and you want a teleprompter to do that, you can do this. This is an extended lifetime deal. It's going to cost you $79 probably for forever. And it gives you a good, quite often these are newly launched things or that type of thing or just really good deals. So if you look onto this, this, this website and look for different things, different software, you can get really good deals on, on things like that. I don't know if this one's in it, but I've got wine stamp. I mean, I got it quite a long time ago, but it is really quite good for getting good deals on software. Um, no, but here you go, there's email badge, which is probably something similar. And it's a free one. So there's different things you can get on AppSumo, but definitely check out AppSumo. Simon has something called, um, it's this video software, Video Peel is what it's called. So Video Peel allows you to easily send links to people so they can record video testimonials for you. And he got that on a lifetime deal. Um, and now, it's, yeah, it's not on here anymore, but Video Peel, for example, is a really good way to get these reviews, like I was saying, and it was on a really cheap deal on AppSumo. So definitely log up to AppSumo. And thank you everybody for reminding me of what it was called. Not a good time to have a, a mind block when you're on here with people watching. So um, MailChimp, you can build an email list. Um, so we are talking about um, building lists coming up shortly, especially in respect of Amazon. So um, I don't know if we're talking about MailChimp and what we're talking about with Chris, but um, definitely you can use MailChimp for free to get started um, and start building a list. Because the thing is about building a list is it's a way to start building relationships with people who are interested in whatever your topic area is. And that is by creating regular connection with them. And you can do that through email. Uh, productivity. So there is a really, really good book, which um it's upstairs otherwise i'll show it you and it's called uh i hate this you know like and it's called it's called i'm gonna find you what it's called um it's called second brain something about second brain and he it is we can consume so much information don't we? we consume so much information and we're trying to keep hold of it all. Let me have a look in here. It's, he's called Tiago something, Tiago Forte or something, second brain. Let's have a look. Google, do me proud, find what I can't remember. Here we go. Building a second brain. This is a great book. Okay. This is a really great book. So here's an overview um, of building a second brain and it's about creating systems basically and how you keep track of all the things that you are learning uh, all the time here's the book here's the book thank you amazon thank you everybody for saving me building a second brain here you go and a proven method to organize your digital life and unlock your creative potential definitely get this book because it really can help you sort out and i sorted out all my notes section and it says about you have an archive section for things you don't look at anymore. You have your projects, which are your projects, which are things that are ongoing. So I might have Internet Business School as a project. So it's something that I do. I have a community. So I'd have a separate section for my community. Um, and then you can have areas of your life. So maybe you have an area for your children or an area of house, your house, running your house, all those kind of things. And so you file stuff. So if you if you are scrolling on the Internet and you come across a recipe and you think, oh, that'd be great to cook Sunday lunch, you can pop that into the house section or the recipe section. So um, productivity is increased where you create systems. And so um, this guy, Tiago, I think it's how you pronounce it, Forte, is really, really good. So I would definitely recommend you looking at his book and he talks about some of the apps that you can um, use to help increase your your productivity um so let me have a look thank you 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 lot are all on, look at you you lot are all on it this morning chris and uh, marita you just know where i am you're just like saving me as my mind goes blank so evernote who uses evernote let me know Evernote is really good um, and um, really good for keeping everything organized. Google Drive is free. You can use Google Drive, organize and share your files. We use that a lot at the Internet Business School. Trello, again, a free way to manage and then visualize things. And Basecamp, um, there's a free thing to Basecamp as well, which I like to use. So there's some productivity things that I like, but I would definitely say use that book. 
Um, no, I don't use Notion, but I do know some people who do use Notion. There's a whole thing around using Notion and setting it up. And um, I definitely think some people are um, really, you know, got their brain wired in a certain way. And I really wish I was that person, but I just try little bits. But Okay. So that is all of the stuff that I'm sharing with you about um our free tools. I hope you've found those free tools helpful this morning. I hope you've used some of them. <laughs>